proud to be your local quality award-winning newscast. Fox 21 News. A driver strikes a police officer, then flees the scene. Plus, we're learning more about what led up to Duluth's first murder of the year. And why are fires causing more damage in Duluth this year? Your Fox 21 News at 9 starts right now. Quality, in-depth, local coverage. This is your station, Fox 21 News. Good evening, I'm Amy Rutledge. And I'm Nick LaFave. The man accused of Duluth's first homicide of the year has been arraigned. Spencey Walker stood before a judge formally charged with second-degree murder. Fox 21's Joy Redmond was in the St. Louis County courtroom and has the details. He's accused of killing one man and pistol-whipping another. This morning, 21-year-old Spencey Walker was formally charged with second-degree murder. It's Duluth's first homicide of the year, and police say it was a drug deal gone bad. The shooting took place at 227 West 3rd Street on June 14th. Police say they found four one-half pound bags of what is believed to be marijuana in the building's backyard. Officials say they have identified everyone that was at the scene of the shooting, but they are not releasing their identities. According to the criminal complaint, two witnesses say the victim, Stanley Booty, told them to come to the apartment for a drug deal. When the marijuana was taken out and laid on the floor, Walker allegedly pulled a 45 caliber pistol on everyone in the room and said words to the effect that he was not playing, that he was going to rob them, and that he would kill all of them. Witnesses say Walker then struck one victim in the head with the gun, and when Booty jumped at Walker, they began to tussle. According to the complaint, two shots were fired during the struggle. One bullet struck Spency Walker, the murder suspect, in the chest and exited through his back. An autopsy shows the other bullet was found lodged in Stanley Booty's back. He died in surgery. Judge Maher set the defendant's bail at $300,000. His next court appearance is scheduled for July 14th. St. Louis County Attorney Melanie Ford says they requested a high dollar bond for a reason. Mr. Walker doesn't have a permanent residence in Duluth. Um, the assault was committed, or the murder was committed with a gun. Drugs were involved. And um, we were um, very concerned about public safety and his um, staying in town uh, pending the, um, the, the full proceedings. Walker has not been assigned a public defender. In Duluth with photojournalist Harry Baker, I'm Joy Redman, Fox 21 News. A Northland police officer is recovering this evening after being struck by a car last night. While he's in the hospital, investigators are looking for the driver that left him on the side of the road. A lonely country road quickly became a hazard for one Lake Nebagaman police officer. Jesse Beasley, on the force just over a year, stopped along South Lake Boulevard just off Highway S around 11 o'clock to check on a dog that may have been hurt. The dog was fine, but Officer Beasley was in danger. He was walking back to his squad car when he was uh, hit by a, a passing vehicle. As Officer Beasley was attending to the downed animal, he was wearing a reflective vest, and his squad's headlights and emergency lights were both running. But that still didn't stop the suspect vehicle from hitting him. He was uh, kind of concerned after the officer in Chippewa County was hit by that car. And we, as all of us are concerned, and he was doing the right steps to try to protect himself. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Detective John Peranto says the gray or white colored Grand Am was driving with its lights off and after striking Beasley, drove off, leaving him lying on the side of a rural road in the middle of the woods. There's not a lot of traffic on that road, so he had to make his way back to the squad car himself to call for help. Fortunately, a Douglas County Sheriff's deputy lived less than four minutes away. Beasley had a dislocated shoulder and was life flighted to St. Mary's Hospital. While he is expected to make a full recovery, Detective Peranto says it's a sobering reminder to give emergency vehicles all the room they need while they work. These people are not only police officers, but their fathers, their wives, their sons, their daughters. These are people in our community. Again, the car that struck Officer Beasley was a white or gray Pontiac Grand Am heading south on South Lake Boulevard near Lake Nebagaman around 11 o'clock last night. There would be damage to the front driver's side of the car. Detective Peranto says any and all tips are welcome. You can call the Douglas County Sheriff's Office at 715-395-1371 or the tip line, 715-395-7468. 
Fires in Duluth homes and businesses in the first half of 2008 collectively have been more significant, more expensive, and more deadly than they have been at this point in any of the past five years. Reporter Will Aschenmacher of our news partner, the Duluth News Tribune, is covering that story. There haven't been more fires this year, but City Fire Chief John Strongtharm said Duluth is seeing more serious fires. They have claimed four lives so far this year. That compares with only one fire death each year for the past two years. Since January 1st, the Northland chapter of the Red Cross has helped 56 Duluthians displaced by 18 fires. Tony Garrett, the chapter's emergency services director, said they have already passed out more hotel vouchers this year than in all of last year. The 54 structure fires so far this year have amounted to $3.7 million in damage, more than the past two years combined. Fire officials can point to no single reason why this year's fires have been more expensive. Chief Strongtharm noted many of the fires have been in occupied buildings filled with belongings rather than vacant properties, which have been the sites of these fires more frequently in previous years. Fire crews have also been called to many fires this year only after the blaze has done considerable damage. I'm Will Oshenmacher, reporting for the Duluth News Tribune and Fox 21 News. And you can read more in tomorrow's Duluth News Tribune. The Duluth business is getting some state funding to help grow. Today, officials signed a $200,000 grant for Lake Superior College to train 80 North Star Aerospace workers. North Star Aerospace President and CEO John Eagleton says they now have 115 employees, but plan to have 300 three years from now. We have the business in-house to grow, continue to grow the company, and we have to make sure we're training workers for the jobs we have, if uh, not only today, but into the future. North Star Aerospace makes aircraft seats, pre precision machine components, parts, and assemblies for the aerospace industry. Now tonight's World News Wrap. President Bush says the upcoming election in Zimbabwe appears to be a sham. That's after the opposition candidate withdrew due to violence. Meanwhile, today, Queen Elizabeth II stripped Zimbabwe leader Robert Mugabe of his knighthood. Cuba has, has approved the world's first ever lung cancer vaccine. Doesn't prevent cancer, but it does help prolong the life of lung cancer victims. Still not available in the United States. And heavy rain has added more water to the swollen Mississippi River in Missouri and Illinois. People in some towns are still waiting for the river to crest. Grafton, Illinois, is now expecting a crest 13 feet above flood stage. Chief Meteorologist Todd Nelson joins us now, and I'm telling you, Todd, when I went to Lake Nebagaman earlier today, had felt like 10 degrees warmer while I was down there. Yeah, it was kind of a strange day. If you were by the downtown area, we had warm conditions to start the day. The lake mm -hmm. breeze came in, temperatures dropped into the 50s, and now we're back into the upper 70s mm -hmm. downtown. It's a very strange day, but if you were inland anywhere, it was in the 80s. It was nice. It was very warm. Not only that, but it was pretty humid. Now, the Midwest flooding, actually places in southern Iowa, northern Missouri today, picked up close to eight inches of rain from a very large storm complex that went through last night. Here across our area, the Northland, we had just a few spotty showers and thunderstorms, some of which were a little on the strong side here earlier this morning and then once again this afternoon. Those thunderstorms will continue to die out. High temperatures today, very mild as you mentioned, 84 over the hill, 90 in Minneapolis. That's the first 90 degree temperature they've seen. And a quick look at the forecast overnight tonight. Temperatures will stay mild, upper 50s to low 60s. And any of those showers that are still out there will continue to die out, will become mostly clear, and that'll set us up for a nice start to the day tomorrow. But we do have some big changes coming in to the Northland just in time for the weekend. Okay, nice cool down tonight, though. Very humid out there today. Yeah. It, it was, definitely. All right, thanks a lot, mm -hmm. Todd. Up next in the show, a country music legend is on his way to the Northland tomorrow. Plus, the public gets a chance to comment on plans for big upgrades at Spirit Mountain. And young rock climbers find a Northwoods adventure in the heart of Duluth. You're watching Fox 21 News at 9. Tonight's news is brought to you by Miller Creek Garden Center. 
Summer celebrations are going on now at Miller Creek Garden Center. Stop in today to color your life with our incredible selections of annuals, hanging baskets, patio planters, and perennials at closeout prices. Get them before they're gone. Get the dirt on landscaping. Let our staff help with your project by selecting from the area's largest selection of soil, shrubs, trees, decorative rock, and mulch. Celebrate summer at Miller Creek Garden Center, 4785 Swan Lake Road, Hermantown. Keep your... You're watching Fox 21 News, Emmy Award nominated best evening newscast in the Upper Midwest. Today, the people who run Spirit Mountain introduce plans for upgrades. They held an open house to get public comment on a new master plan. It includes adding a second chalet at the bottom of the hill along Grand Avenue and other additions to make Spirit Mountain a Four Seasons destination. We're going to add some summer events, uh, some slides and some uh, uh, activities for mountain biking. The upgrades could take decades to complete. Spirit Mountain officials say the cost would be covered by new revenues and existing tourism taxes. The owner of a legendary Superior Bar has died. Thomas Wesley Anderson had owned the Anchor Bar in Superior since 1977. He had been suffering from prostate cancer. Anderson was 61. Memorial services are scheduled for Friday. Willie Nelson will perform in the Northland tomorrow. He's coming to Big Top Chautauqua making up a performance he had to miss last summer because of health problems. All of the seats under the Big Top are sold, but grounds tickets still available, $75 a piece. And I'm sure Willie is hoping for some good weather tomorrow. Certainly, and all the concert, concert goers as well. We're hoping that the weather will pan out. Todd Nelson will have the forecast coming up next. Chrysler Dodge and Jeep are giving you relief at the pump just when you need it most. We can go anywhere in our Jeep Patriot. We can haul the boat to the lake in our Dodge Ram. We're going on our summer vacation in our Chrysler Town and Country. And we won't pay more than $2.99 a gallon for gas. Now when you buy or lease most Chrysler Dodge or Jeep vehicles, you'll pay just $2.99 a gallon for gas or diesel in each of the next three years for up to the first 12,000 miles per year. $2.99. Let's refuel America. See your Chrysler Dodge or Jeep dealer today. Garden Center, your locally owned oasis for everything you need to make your outdoor living space wonderful. Shop in Duluth or Superior and visit us online for special promotions and gardening tips from our certified staff at LakeSuperiorGardenCenter.com. Explore Minnesota presents the Summer of Fun Giveaway. Your chance to win one of many incredible prizes, like a two-year lease on a Toyota Prius Hybrid. Or win an Articat ATV or a specialized mountain bike, or one of many exciting weekly prizes. The Summer of Fun Giveaway from Explore Minnesota, Dairy Queen, and Luther Auto Group. Enter today at exploreminnesota.com. Save 50% on a recliner this June at Easy Home. Simply make a $1,500 purchase and get 50% off any new recliner. It's a perfect time to buy Dad that new HD TV or maybe even a complete home theater system. Then buy him that new recliner for half off. Best of all, you can finance your purchase with Easy Home's affordable monthly payment plan. This offer ends June 30th, so stop in and see us today. Make your next purchase the Easy Home way. Quality products, fast, friendly financing, and no credit checks. Take a scenic drive to the newest 18-hole championship golf course, the Wilderness at Fortune Bay, where towering pines and breathtaking views of Lake Vermilion make this Minnesota's premier golf destination. After a round of golf, check out our pro shop or enjoy casual dining at the clubhouse. All carts at the Wilderness are equipped with state-of-the-art GPS systems. The Wilderness is located on the grounds of Fortune Bay Resort and Casino. Book your tee times online or call 1-800-992-4680. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Cary Toyota. 
You know, who needs air conditioning? It was 84 <laughs> degrees and humid as heck at my house. And then the coming hill. down the hill, yep, 21st, you, you <laughs> saw the temperature dropping yeah. every block. It was amazing and kind of a crazy day downtown as well. Um, I'm just going to pop these numbers up here for you. Take a look at the temperature for the daytime high downtown, 82 degrees. That happened early this morning. And as you mentioned, uh, Amy, as you came down the hill during the afternoon, it really got cold. High temperatures only into the 50s there. And then now, temperatures are actually warming up into the upper 70s. Kind of a crazy uh, temperature swing there. But as you see, many locations into the 80s, with the exception of Grand Marais and Bidette for daytime highs. So, wow. And not only was it hot, it was a little bit humid out there today. 516 tomorrow, sunrise, 57 degrees. We'll start off with a lot of sunshine, but then those increasing clouds and that'll be uh, some of those high, wispy, cirrus clouds kind of filtering out the sunshine. And then by sunset tomorrow, 907, could have a few spotty showers and perhaps some thunderstorms west of our area. But tomorrow, another mild day, 80 degrees, and the winds will also be switching out of the east late tomorrow as this next system approaches from the west. UV index tomorrow, very high, 20 minutes to burn. And this is what it looked like from our time lapse earlier today. Now, Amy, this is what it looked like earlier today. Notice how hazy it is. Yes. We had a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, and with those cooler temperatures downtown, it actually made that atmosphere saturate a little bit, so that why, that's why it was a little bit more hazy downtown. And out there now, not quite as bad. Temperatures have warmed up a little bit downtown. As I mentioned, it's low this morning, 65 degrees, so very mild start. We made it to 84 over the hill. No precipitation, but there were a few thunderstorms in northern Minnesota and also into northwestern Wisconsin. A couple of rounds, one earlier this morning, a few of those were strong, too severe, and then another round this afternoon, and some of those storms were on the strong side, producing some hail and gusty winds. Partly cloudy over the hill now, 73 degrees in a west to northwest wind at 9, and that wind did switch a little bit here this afternoon from the southwest over to the northwest, and that was the main reason why temperatures warmed up uh, downtown this afternoon. 79 downtown right now, 79 in Hayward, a little bit cooler along the North Shore, 64 in Grand Marais and Silver Bay, and still holding on to the 70s there in International Falls. 90 degrees this afternoon in Minneapolis, as I mentioned, or as I mentioned, not only, not only was it hot, but it was humid. Dew points into the 60s, Anytime that occurs, it feels uh, downright humid for us. Uh, we don't really deal with conditions like this so often. And uh, those northwest winds behind that helping to draw in a little bit drier air. That's what we'll be dealing with tomorrow. But another storm system approaching from the west. This one will actually be bringing us some wet weather here as we head into Friday and Saturday and also the first part of Sunday. It's going to sit on top of us and basically just rain itself out. We'll have your forecast right after this. This is my second Prius. Um, I, I not only liked the vehicle, but the service that came along with it. And my husband drives a Prius. I have a Camry. And we just keep turning our vehicles over and keep coming back. They treat you like a family member. They are a family. They treat you like a family member. They take care of you. They really do. Experience the difference at Cary Toyota. All right, don't forget to check out my weather blog at tomorrow's Duluth News Tribune. Your forecast closer to home tomorrow, increasing clouds. Temperatures very mild once again, but then late in the afternoon, we'll see those winds switching out of the east and southeast, and it will become a quite breezy as we head into the weekend. 57 overnight tonight. It will be another mild one. We'll start with lots of sunshine, but increasing clouds. Temperatures about 10 degrees above average. Thursday night into Friday, a round of showers and thunderstorms, and we'll see a dry punch or some drier air working into the system. So I think Friday afternoon, we'll see a bit of a drying period. But then, as I mentioned, that storm system kind of sits and spins over us. So cooler temperatures, cloudy skies, and some spotty showers on Saturday and Sunday. We could have a few lingering showers as well. But by next week, we'll warm back up again, and it will be uh, quite mild next week with uh, many locations back into the 80s. Rain got to be on the weekend. Yeah, gotta unfortunately. Weekend. All right, thanks a lot. Coming up next in sports, Chris has a bonanza of baseball. That is correct. Brewers, Twins, Huskies, you name it, he's got your favorite team covered. Fox 21 Sports coming up next. Now at Slumberland, spend $5.99 or more and get $100 of furniture.
So Chris went to Washington, D.C. yesterday to cover the Bulldogs. Where'd you go tonight for sports? <laughs> I, I went around. Yeah. I, was, I was in the area. Of you say not, not really D.C., more of Duluth. No okay. 6 a.m. flights. No, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness, yeah. I can only do it once a year. Okay. So Bulldogs, next year we're okay. Hey, although, uh, you know, their spot in the NL Central standings doesn't show it, the Milwaukee Brewers are among the hottest teams in the league. Not only have they won eight of nine, they're also playing well away from home, winning four straight Road Warriors, maybe not, but it even took Mad Max two movies just to make that happen. We're going to Atlanta with this, so it is not D.C., but eh, it's Atlanta. It took, well, it looked like the Brew Crew, ready to earn their stripes early on. Mike Rivera, Ricky Weeks both end up with a run scoring double, and it is two zip Milwaukee. But Jeff Supon really gives it right back in the bottom half of the inning. Kelly Johnson, a two run double, and it's all tied up at deuces. In the fifth, Gregor Blanco gives the Bravos the lead for the RBI single. And then Mike Gonzalez holds down the fourth of the night, getting Bill Hall, who is from Nettleton, Mississippi, but not showing it right there. Brewers fall 4-2 as the Braves add Milwaukee's road winning streak. The Brewers have to be kicking themselves for a decision not to renegotiate a contract extension with Ben Sheets this offseason. Understandably, Milwaukee, well, they must have been a little leery after suffering through three injury-plagued season. But this year, Sheets has made pretty much every start, every scheduled start, that is, but... Now on the heels of his NL leading third complete game of the season, Sheets says he will test the free agent waters at the end of the year. With the way Ben's been pitching, Clint Hurdle would be hard-pressed to keep him out of the All-Star game. Same holds true for Ryan Braun and Joe Maurer should be pretty good on the AL side, but if Braun and Maurer want to start, they need your help. That is true. Braun trails Ken Griffey Jr. Or third spot in the outfield, about 160,000 votes shy. So get cracking, Brewers fans. Thanks to a recent surge, Maurer would be starting in or starting if voting ended today. The Twins fans need to keep him there because he's only leading by about 45,000 votes. Voting continues through next Tuesday at MLB.com or your favorite team's website. And if you're a little loopy, like everybody's favorite sports reporter, Greg Chandler, you can vote up to 25 times a day. I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying it can happen. Twins, well, they won their seventh straight game last night, and we were all hoping for crazy eight tonight, but so far, not so good. Top of the second right now, San Diego leads two to nothing. Lacrosse, loggers, and Duluth Huskies doing battle tonight, and although bouncing is fun, it can be a bit messy. I'm not, I'm not gonna show that. I'm not, who do you think I am? Amy, you thought I was gonna show something, didn't you? <laughs> Huskies fans, they did feel a little sick, because it can be messy. Right. It's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a joke that is, is Shouldn't be on the air. You're right. <laughs> one nothing. <laughs> Lockers after that RBI single. Huskies outfielder Robbie Price with a double over the center fielder's head. But the Huskies, they strand him at second base. So into the second inning, Loggers get a little greedy. Andrew Durden ends up with an arm from right field. Take a look at this. Looking a little bit like Michael Kadire. Arias getting him down with the assist. But defense can only do so much. Huskies, they trail 7-1. In the top of the seventh, and I know I know what you were thinking. I, I would never show that on the air. Okay, good. Ever. It's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel relieved. Thanks a lot, Chris. So does the baby. <laughs> All right, still ahead in the show. It's not just any city where you can go on a rock climbing adventure right in town. But that's just what these kids did today in Duluth. You're watching Fox 21 News at 9. A group of young outdoor enthusiasts are challenging themselves as they climb to new heights. In tonight's Northwoods Adventure, Fox 21's Melissa Ganji takes us rock climbing in Duluth with the Hartley Nature Center's Cliff Critters. I'm going to start climbing up That's now. Good. You're doing great. There you go, yeah. A small group of young adventurers spent the morning climbing a rock face in Duluth. Good, good. You're almost up. Yeah, I know that the rope has got me, and I won't fall, but it's still kind of scary. I'm learning that this is not going to be an easy wall to climb. Ben Zenos of St. Paul is attending Hartley Nature Center's climbing camp. So far, this has been one of the most thrilling climbing experiences of my life, even though I haven't even climbed yet. <laughs> Today, these kids are taking what they've learned inside, outside, in this week-long cliff ecology-based rock climbing camp. It's kind of hard for me to get out and rock climb, so when I saw this opportunity, I was like, sure. So you're going to be facing this way? 
and I'm going to give you a little bit of slack. Climbing okay, instructor Greg Petrie is helping the kids get used to lowering over the edge of the cliff. Nice work, John. It's kind of scary because you have to be lowered down. But a little Very support from each other always helps. There's some bumps in the rocks. Put your hands and feet in them. So I got like halfway, and then I like couldn't find any handholds at all, and then it got really hard. Today, climbing instructors are exposing these kids to urban cliffs in Duluth and testing their limits as they push themselves to the top. We're kind of pushing the limits of their comfort zones, and it's great to see them challenging themselves and uh, proving to themselves that they can do something that maybe they didn't think they could do or were nervous about doing. It felt really good when I was able to get to the top. It's kind of startling how high you can get without even knowing. It was an experience they'll never forget. I'm hoping that they're, they're coming away with a little bit of that. And I'm really hoping that they come away with more, a little bit more um, self-confidence with walking maybe by some of these places with their parents and saying, yeah, I did that, and that was really fun. So that's the idea. Just a little more. In Duluth with photojournalist Tom Skull, I'm Melissa Ganji, Fox 21 News. And the group will climb Ely's Peak tomorrow, and on Friday, the goal is to climb Shovel Point in Tedaguchi State Park on the North Shore. Well, good luck to them. All right, stocks barely moved after the Fed left interest rates unchanged today. Here's a look at today's numbers. Tonight's Northwoods Adventures is brought to you by Marine General. So it was cool, and it was warm, cooled <laughs> off again. What do we got out there right now? It's pretty nice out there now, actually. A few clouds, and those will continue to dwindle. 70 downtown, 73 over the hill, 75 in Superior. Tomorrow, temperatures about what they were today, but we have some changes just to the west, and that'll be approaching as we head into the weekend. Here's a look at the Fox 5-day forecast. Tomorrow, just fine, but then Thursday night into Friday, a round of showers and thunderstorms, and then we'll see lingering showers on Saturday, perhaps on Sunday, but cooler over the weekend. The good news is that as we head into the uh, July 4th week, uh, we'll be a lot better. Get There'll be a guy. lot of pressure there. We need to shave off some of those degrees from tomorrow and move those on I know, Friday. Yeah, that would be good. All right, thanks a lot, yep. Todd. And that is our time for tonight. From all of us here at Fox 21, have a good evening.